importance of the female narrative is that women lead conversations um, and that could be on all levels from the household where they sit around the table and the woman leads the conversation to where it's in the business sphere or in the bank, any public or any sphere that the women are engaged in conversations. We also believe that this isn't feminism. But we believe that because of the age we live in, that feminism causes us to be portrayed much more strongly in that fact. Yeah. But uh, if I can give you the example, if you look at 20 years back, a woman wouldn't have stood up to her husband in the same way as happening today. So that's the psychological way of it is changing as we are progressing and moving on to the future. Now, to get to my positive matter that I will be dealing on today, is I'm going to be asking you two questions. Firstly, I'm going to be focusing on the fact that why are females dominating conversations? And secondly, I'm going to get to the point that why do people rape? Okay, to give you context about this, and then I'm going to prove this by looking at our link. Now, if I can start with why are females dominating conversations? The fact of the matter is we have to face that we live in a, a 21st age feminism. Okay, the fact of the matter is that progressing feminism in all spheres of the world. And if I can give you some context to this, if you look at TV ads, TV ads are, are showing women as being the successful business uh, women and CEOs. They are portraying this to the rest of the world. Secondly, they are also showing that career women, empowering them to be equal to men. We don't have the average um, role of the woman and she goes home and she's a, um, a house mother or, or a, um, a household almost item if you can put it that way. But now they are equal to men in all spheres and they are competing against men in all these spheres. So that is the situation and the, and the problem is, is that is the reason why females are more dominant in conversations because they feel empowered and they feel that they need to prove themselves in all um, forms of relationships, like I said, from work all the way to the household. And that's, the, that's the, the essence of this. The psychological sphere of these women are changing, where it has been from 20 years back to now, where women are, aren't seen, are, are, not even, are, are not even striving to be equal to men, but even to be more equal to men, because they have this mentality of women strive to be equal to men, lack ambition. So that is the, the main, we have to face the mentality of most of women of today. Now, if I can get to the point of looking at the rapist and looking at the psychology of the rapist. Now, I'll be with you now. The rapist is addicted to power in a sexual and physical way. Okay? The rapist, so by taking away the power of the psychology from this man and giving it to the woman, we is getting the woman back in this way by physically uh, being dominant over her in this sphere. So, the fact to get to the question, why do men rape? Firstly, men rape, you have, you have two kinds of basically the ICS. The first is the man who is, it has a mental problem, okay? He is he has, um, physically attracted to having sex with women, okay? He has the sexual drive that he needs to be satisfied on a regular basis, and that is why he will go to the extent of raping women. Secondly, we also do the man we have to face today, or we're looking at men because that's the most of cases in today's um, sphere, is the, the man who feels that his masculinity is being taken away from him. He feels that women are dominating all spheres or that which he as a man views as dominant in a psychological, psychological way. And that's why he will get back at this woman in a physical way. So these are the two rapists that we as an opening government are looking today and we are facing this problem. And if I have to bring this back to the South African sphere, okay? South Africa is a male-dominated country because it is a culturally-based dominated figure. And that is why um, this is very realistic in the South African sphere, because men have this patri patriarchy um, dominant role that they play, especially in very more conservative areas and parts of our country. We start at the PRI. Uh, no. Okay, now, PRI for opening? No, they do. Okay, now our, our link in this debate is the fact of the matter that women are constantly taking away from men what they feel is dominant. So, like I said, men are getting their revenge in this way, in the fact that rape. So that's where we have the problem with the motion of today, is the fact that this dominance of the female narrative, that is adding fuel to the fire with the problem that we are currently facing, is this, these men that feel their masculinity is taken away from them. I accept. Are you justifying rape? <coughs> Not at all. Like I said in the opening of this, we are saying that's the problem that we have. We regret the fact the dominance of the female narrative because we feel that, like I said, this isn't feminism, but it's adding fuel to the fire. It's adding fuel to yeah, the yeah. fire to the fact that these men who come from a, a culture and a, and a household where his father is the dominant figure has to go into a world where that which he portrays as dominant is being taken away from him by women who are competing against him for that job. So this person, this man isn't feeling dominant anymore and that's the problem that we have today with the dominance of the female narrative because now these men are getting back at these women while um, in this way. And like I just have to add, I just have to add before I take this, that we are not working with the everyday 
a guy. Most everyday guy does not worry for women. Like I put, like I said in my context, we are facing those men who have this physical, sexual desire that they have to, um, that they have to meet the whole time, and we are looking at the guy who feels to such an extent that he's, um, his dominance masculinity is taken away from him, that he will go to the extent of raping a woman to get back at her, to, to, to have that, that, that dominance for them to prove to do it that way. I accept. If there are two people being raped in South Africa every month, do you still believe that is in the minority cases? I said it's not in the minority of uh, yeah. cases. That's a problem. And we feel that this is adding fuel to the fire. We need to take those numbers down. And we feel by meeting and facing this problem, by taking away this female dominance of, of or the, the, uh, the female narrative, we feel that we can maybe give, bring a cure to this problem. We feel that we can be addressing the core, the core issue to the fact that it's rape and the disgusting harmful that it causes, not only physically to women, but psych psychologically. So that's a problem that we have today. And we, like I said, we're not working with the everyday average guy. We're working with these people who have the sick um, idea in their head. And we as open government um, today believe that the fact that if we can address this female narrative, this dominance of it, that this is the, the core problem, and this is adding fuel to the fire, like we are in South Africa, we have such a big problem with rape. And like I said, it's a dominated uh, male world, South Africa, most of it. So by adding fuel to the fire, by giving this dominance of the female narrative, we are having a big issue in this sense. That is why we as open government believe that this dominance of the female narrative, and we regret that. Thank you very much.